Jeff fans, I don't even know where to start after that performance against the Dolphins. I think, without question, that was the most embarrassing game of the year just because of how winnable it was. Uh, Performance-wise, you could point to Jacksonville as maybe being a little bit worse. But, you know, at least then, you know, it, it was early in the season. They were facing a defense at the time that was, you know, still a pretty dominant defense coming off, you know, their AFC Championship game appearance last year. Um, you know, for a young quarterback on the road, that was a tough one. But this week, I mean, there's no excuses for a performance like this, coming out flat like this. There is no excuse. The offense looked like it didn't even practice all week. The Dolphins had given up like 450 rushing yards over the last two games. I think they only had one pick over their last three games, and, you know, Darnold gave him four of them. Not all his fault. Um, he certainly didn't have his best game by any means. But, you know, you could start with Spencer Long. Um, I, I think that just threw off so many different things, you know, as far as timing goes, as far as his ability to go through his progressions. You know, he was just – there's only so much you can ask a rookie quarterback to do. You know, Ray Lucas was breaking it down great on the SNY post game. You know, if the quarterback is looking down – you know, and trying to figure out where the ball's going to be on the snap, it's it's impossible for him to keep his eyes downfield and, you know, go through his progressions and everything. So, you know, again, that, that falls on Bowles, you know, entirely. That falls on Bowles. You know, the fact that that's been an issue with Spencer Long over the last couple of weeks while he's been injured, you know, it should have been a short leash. If, if he was still doing the same thing, take him out, put Harrison in. Harrison is not bad. He's a decent backup to have at center. You can still win with him. Um, it was clear that, you know, long in the snaps, it was just taking Darnold and the offense completely out of rhythm. So, you know, that falls on Bowles. And as great as the defense played, you know, which is Bowles' staple, you know, and they played phenomenally. I think they gave up like 160-something yards. Um, as great as they played, they only gave up six points. And, you know, Darnold gave them the other seven. Unfortunately, as a head coach, you're a head coach. You're the coach of the entire team. It's not just the defense. And... When you see something going on like that with Spencer Long, or you know, you see the play calling is unimaginative and it's not getting anything done, that's where you got to step in. That's where you got to have you know a backup plan. You got to make adjustments, and these are things that you know at times I think Bowles has taken too much heat for, and at other times I, I think it's been deserved. And you know the times that it have that it has been deserved, I think those are starting to add up now to the point where it's like. How can you got? How can you defend this guy much longer? Um, yes, it's a rebuild. You know, yes, it's year two of the rebuild, and you're starting a rookie quarterback. But there are certain things that you got to see, you know, to make you say, "All right, this is a guy that we can move forward with. This is a guy that can get us to the promised land as the head coach." And so far, it, it, it's very hard, very hard to to justify um, keeping Todd Bowles around. You know, I, I've been very patient for you guys that have watched my videos. I've been incredibly patient with him. Um, try I try not to blame everything on him like most people do. You know, like last week with all the pre-snap penalties and everything, everybody blamed him for them. Um, I think he's been unfairly criticized for having an undisciplined team. Um, you know, when the Jets are one of the best or least penalized teams in football right now. Um, so I do think he takes a lot of heat for things that aren't always his fault. But at the end of the day, there are certain things that you see that just make you shake your head. And, you know, on, on that note, I'll also I'll touch on McCagnan again because I mentioned a few things on Twitter. Um, first thing I mentioned was first-round picks because I said McCagnan's been dominating his first round. And it seems a lot of people um, didn't agree with that. Uh, you know, said, oh, you know, he had top picks and... Um, you know, he missed on the mid rounds and, you know, other teams do it better. Well, I, I showed every team's first round pick over the last four years and there's maybe three, four, maybe five teams that you would want to swap out the Jets picks, you know, for the other team's picks. So he has dominated his first round and he has strategically built up, you know, a hundred million dollars plus in cap space to be able to build around Darnold and to get this thing over the hump. And it's just funny to me because if we think that Todd Bowles, or Jeremy Bates, or the play calling, or whatever it is, if that's the reason that the team isn't winning games right now, this early in the rebuild, well, then aren't we kind of saying that Mike McCagnan has a roster that at least has some talent that should be winning ball games? Either that, or we're saying that Bowles is doing a hell of a job with a roster that has no talent. To me, it's one or the other, and I think most people would agree it's Bowles. Um, McCagnan certainly has made his share of mistakes, 
you know, you can point to a couple contracts that haven't worked, but he's also had a, a few very nice under the radar signings that have worked. Um, you can point to, you know, some mid-round picks that have been bust. You know, even I'll, I'll say it, he's got to draft better as far as the wide receivers go, as far as finding playmakers. I, I just don't think it's all been bad with him. I think it's been more good with McCagnan than it's been bad, um, especially when you're trying to build something pretty much from scratch. You know, he came in, he had the money to spend, he spent it, he won 10 games the first year, he structured the deals in a way that he could get out from underneath them right away, and as soon as it went bad in year two, he did that, he got out from underneath the deals, and he recognized, hey, we need to rebuild because we have absolutely nothing on this roster, okay? That you can point to John Idzik for, okay? So, you know, they made the decision to rebuild, and when you make that decision, you know it's going to be, you know, at least a three-year process, and so I, I try not to go too crazy over losses in year two, but just as far as being a team that's prepared each week and, you know, taking chances and, and trying to win games, and I'm just not seeing, at least from the offensive side of the football, um, and again, I, I know some of that's on Donald. Um, it's, it's not all on the coaching. Um, when you have a rookie quarterback, there's only so much that you could do at certain times, but, you know, this loss was a real bad one for me. Um, it, it's certainly pushing me towards that uh that fire bulls mantra that that continues to be out there after every loss so um i'm at the point again where it's very hard to defend him i'm not going to defend him for games like this anymore you can't defend him for games like this anymore um the team just it, it has to show more it has to do better um so at least for me i think these next what is it seven games that we got left um it, it's going to be huge for bulls i think if he doesn't find a way to at least go three and four, if not four and three, and finish up with like seven wins. I'm not sure if he's going to be back next year. Um, and if, if he's not, you know, I wouldn't really um, be too upset about it. I think he's a good dude. I think he's coached the defense very well. I think he has a good relationship with the players, and he has positively changed the culture here a little bit. But, you know, at a certain point, you got to start expecting wins. And if you don't think he's the guy to get you over the hump and get you those wins, then you got to make a move. Um, so again, I'll continue to say it. I, I think McCagnan is safe. People that you know are, are saying he should be fired. Um, I just think that's the last thing we need to start a whole nother rebuild, or at least with a whole nother regime again. Um, yeah, there's a lot of pieces here, and you know he's worked hard to to build up that cap space to be able to to do what he's going to do next off season. So I think he deserves that chance. Um, if you were expecting him to win this year and, you know, you put a playoff mandate on this season, then yeah, he probably would have spent that money foolishly and, you know, tried to add pieces to win now. But I, I think ownership understood this was a, a rebuild, a three-year process. And so, you know, they were going to give the benefit of the doubt to, you know, McCagnan and Bowles uh, for year two, especially when they made the decision to start a rookie quarterback. But that being said, um, you know, if Darnold isn't progressing and, you know, you're just seeing a team that's not able to close out games still, you know, which was the issue from last year. Uh, it, it's hard to say you know, that you should keep him at this point. So, again, I think McCagnon's done enough. But for Bowles, I think these next seven games, um, it, it's going to be big for him. It, it's going to be – it's going to be – if they don't win next week, let's just say that. If they don't win next week against Buffalo, um, I don't think they're going to fire him at the bye week. But – if they lose next week to Buffalo, I think the writing's pretty much on the wall that he's not going to be back. So hopefully we get this thing turned around. Obviously losing games like this is never fun. Um, falling to three and six, pretty much, you know, that's pretty much the end of the season. I mean, unless they go on some crazy hot streak where they, you know, rattle off four or five in a row, which I don't think this team is capable of, at least not yet. But, you know, as pissed off as I am right now and as much as this sucks and as difficult as that game was to watch, I still maintain what I've said all season that I don't think this team is far away. I, I think that if you put a couple pieces around Darnold on offense and you find that edge rusher on defense, there's no reason this team isn't a playoff team with Bowles as coach or without Bowles as coach. Um, that's just my honest opinion. I think there are a few pieces away, but yeah, I, I think there are legitimate questions about whether or not Bowles should be the guy to to oversee things next year. So Try and keep your heads up. It's tough right now. I'm about to go enjoy some of the rest of the game, so I'll talk to you guys later.